Those who survived the attack are still fighting for justice, as Elia Natsky from BBC Urdu reports. She was crippled for life. I resisted, and in the scuffle she fell out of my arms, and out of the window. I had only been eleven days since her wedding. I had returned from my parents' house that very day. They took the men away. Some started drinking alcohol. Zuni and Zarina, not their real names, were also getting ready to go to bed when they heard a series of loud knocks on the door. Not at the time, India had started a large scale military operation in an attempt to control a popular armed insurgency against Indian rule in Kashmir. More than 26 years ago, Indian soldiers allegedly raped more than 30 women in the Kashmiri villages of Kunan and Pashpura. The men would be paraded in front of an informer, and suspected militants or those deemed sympathizers would be picked up and taken away. When Zuni and Serena saw soldiers on their doorstep that night, they thought it was the beginning of another of these so called crackdowns. Three soldiers grabbed me, tore my fur in, my shirt, I don't even know what all happened after that. There were five of them. I still remember their faces. Serena was also in the same house. We haven't just been wronged, what we have faced is an infinite injustice. The men were taken away, and the soldiers came in, as was the established practice. Even today when we see soldiers we start shaking with fear. The people of Kunan and neighboring Pashpura, accuse the Indian army of carrying out a planned mass rape of the women in these two far-flung villages. What happened after that, I cannot begin to describe it. So-called cordon and search operations, locally called crackdowns, were becoming routine, and still persist to this day. And now it seems a group of young Kashmiri women are determined to wipe this dust away. In 2014, they filed a petition to reopen the case in the state high court. Some soldiers asked my mother-in-law about all the new clothes hanging in the room, so she told them, Here, she is our new daughter-in-law. Our new bride. The people of Kunan, a tiny village in Indian administered Kashmir's Kupwara district, were retiring for the night after a cold winter day. I was holding my two year old daughter in my arms when they tried to grab me. They also claimed that while the women were gang raped, the men were subjected to horrific torture, and that they have been fighting for justice these last 26 years. In Srinagar, when I spoke with a minister in the state government, Naeem Akhtar, about these allegations he said that in conflicts like Kashmir truth often gets obscured by the layer of dust that settles on it. It was February 23, 1991. But remembering that day makes their eyes fill with tears even now? We were getting ready for bed when the soldiers came. In the 1990s, this would entail Indian security forces isolating an area getting all the men out, and then searching the houses, 